Hey, I'm going to show you a technique for breaking down the kinds of rhythms you see all the time, making them easy to understand and perform. We're going to use simple one-beat figures to decode more complicated rhythms, the kind that would leave a lot of sight readers feeling uneasy. So this is a bar of rhythm that's pretty common in any kind of contemporary music. There's ties all over the place, and it can look a bit overwhelming. But if we changed it to this, well, that couldn't be simpler. It's the same one beat figure three times over, and then a couple of eighth notes. And if you've done my previous videos on rhythm, you'll be able to perform this really quickly. There's the eighth and two sixteenths. Da, da, da. And then the eighth notes. Da, da. Put it together in sequence. Da, 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 da. So, of course, we're performing all of the notes that are written, but we're also performing where ties and rests occur, giving a kind of placeholder to each action, whether it be playing or resting or sustaining, mapping out our actions in relationship to the beat. And this is important. That's the reason the ties are used in the first place. A sixteenth tied to an eighth note, of course, could be more simply expressed as a dotted eighth. But the reason in this instance we don't write that is because it would obscure the beat. The tie breaks up the note value. Might look more confusing to the untrained eye, but it's actually giving us more information, showing us where the beat lands. Which means what we're doing in this first step is performing the rhythm as well as performing the beat, making sure it's clear to our brain and our body what that relationship is so we can get the timing down. It also resolves syncopated rhythms to a collection of much simpler one-beat figures. Okay, you get the idea. Practice performing this one that way. Ready? Now we're going to drop all of the placeholder values. Put a rest anywhere we don't start a new attack. So that means we're not holding on the ties. If you were playing a snare drum, say, without any sustain, you just wouldn't do anything on that moment. Might as well be a rest. Then we get this. Da, 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 da. You try. You've already learned the underlying groove, and we're just leaving select notes out of it. And now to perform the rhythm as written, we simply don't perform where there's a rest and hold where there's a tie. So we get this. Da 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 da. See? You try. Nice. We resolved a more complex rhythm to a simpler one, and that allows us to see where all the rhythmic attacks are and where the beat lands in relation. Okay, now we're going to practice this over a series of examples. And as you master this skill of decoding rhythm, after a time, you'll start to realize that you don't actually have to work through the steps anymore. You'll see where the beat lands and where your actions go in relationship to it organizes your thinking, and makes what might have looked like clutter before appear more like a roadmap for performing the rhythm perfectly. By the way, the examples we're going to be performing are rhythms from a couple popular songs, so feel free to guess what they are in the comments. All right, let's get to work. First thing, we unhook all the ties and replace rests with notes if they coincide with the beat. Now, notice the one beat figures that emerge. There's Da da da, da da da, and da da. Well, and I suppose we can count the quarter note rest at the beginning, which becomes da. So the original rhythm gets simplified to this. Da, da 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 da. You give that a go.
Great. By the way, if you're having trouble with this bit, make sure you check out my rhythm lesson where we master all the main one beat figures. Link in the description. Okay, now we remove all the placeholder notes. Anywhere there was a tie or a rest will now remain silent. You can still think the simplified one beat figure in your brain to give you the timing, but now we're just leaving some of the notes out. Da 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 You give that a go? Last time, now sustaining on the ties. Da 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 Hand your turn. Now for the next step, we're going to do the same thing, except you're going to take the lead. Okay, you know what to do. Isolate all of the one beat units. You can pause the video to give yourself a chance to figure it out. Right, so there's da da da, da da, da da, da da da, and da. Now we perform the rhythm in sequence using the simplified one beat figures. You go. And to check, this is what it ought to have sounded like. Da 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 da. Now we drop the placeholder notes, put rests instead. Give that a go. And check it. Da 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 And now the last step. Instead of simply resting where there were ties, we sustain through. You go. And what it should have sounded like? Da 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 da. Now, as you apply this technique to rhythms that challenge you, you'll discover that most rhythms at root are just an arrangement of the basic one beat figures or variations thereof using rests or ties as we've seen here. Get good at this technique and you'll be able to sight read just about any rhythm you come across. Okay, that's it for this time. Special thanks to my patrons for making this possible. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments, subscribe so you catch my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Sahar Galt. I'll see you next time.